But you have found me, for accordingly you tread upon my patience. I will from henceforth rather be myself, mighty and to be feared than my condition, which has been smooth as oil, soft as young down, and therefore lost that title of respect which the proud soul ne'er pays but to the proud. Our house, my sovereign liege, Little deserves this scourge of greatness to be used on, and that same greatness too which our own hands have hoped to make so portly. What, girl? Get thee gone, for I do spy danger and disobedience in that eye. Oh, sir, your presence is too bold and peremptory, and majesty might never yet endure the moody frontier of a servant brow. You have good leave to leave us. When we need your use and counsel, we shall send for you. <laughs> you were about to speak. Yea, my good lord, those prisoners in your highness' name demanded, which Harry Percy here at Holmden took, were, as he says, not with such strength denied as is delivered to your majesty. Either envy, therefore, or Miss Prisian is guilty of this fault, and not my son. My liege, I did deny no prisoners. But I remember uh, when the fight was done, when I was dry with rage and extreme toil, breathless and faint, leaning upon my sword, came there a certain lord, neat and trimly dressed, fresh as a bridegroom, and his chin new reaped, showed like a stubble land at harvest home. He was perfumed like a milliner, and twixt his finger and his thumb he held a poncet box, which ever and anon he gave his nose and took away again, who then was angry when the next came there, took it in snuff, and still he smiled and talked, and as the soldiers bore dead bodies by, he caught them untaught knaves, unmannerly to bring a slovenly, unhandsome course betwixt the wind and his nobility. <laughs> With many holiday and lady terms, he questioned me amongst the rest demanded those prisoners in your majesty's behalf. I then, all smarting with my wounds, being called to be so pestered with a poppin' jay, and in my grief and my impatience answered neglectingly, and I know not what. Think he should or he should not, for he made me mad to see him shine so crisp, and smell so sweet, and talk so like a waiting gentlewoman of guns and drums and wounds. Oh, God save the mark, and telling me, the sovereign's thing on earth was Palmer City put in with a bruise. And it was a great pity, so it was, this villainous saltpeter should be digged out of the bowels of the harmless earth, which many a good tall fellow had destroyed so cowardly. And, and but for these vile guns, he would himself have been a soldier. Uh, th this bull, unjointed chat of this, my lord, I answered indirectly, as I said. And I beseech you, let not his report come current for an accusation betwixt my love and your high majesty. The circumstance considered, good my lord, whate'er Lord Harry Percy then had said, to such a person and in such a place, at such a time with all the rest he told, may reasonably die, and never rise to do him wrong, or any way impeach what then he said. So he unsay it now. Why yet he doth deny his prisoners? But with proviso and exception, that we at our own charge shall ransom straight his brother-in-law, the foolish Mortimer, who on my soul hath willfully betrayed the lives of those that he did lead to fight against that great magician, Dan Glendower, whose daughter, as we have heard, 
the Earl of March had paid the Marriott. Shall we find our coffers empty to redeem a traitor home? Shall we buy treason and in debt with fears what they have lost and forfeited themselves? No! On the barren mountains let him starve, for I shall never hold that man my friend again that bid me use one penny cost to ransom home revolted Mortimer. Revolted Mortimer! He never did fall off my sovereign liege, but by the chance of war. Oh, to prove that true needs no more but one tongue for all those wounds, those malignant wounds which valiantly he took upon the gentle severn sedgy bank. In single opposition, hand to hand, he did confound the better part of an hour and changing argument with great blend hour. Three times did they breathe, and three times did they drink upon agreement of Swift Severn's flood, who then, affrighted with their bloody looks, ran fearfully and hid his crisp head in the hollow bank, blood stained with these valiant competence. Never did base and rotten policy color her working with such deadly wounds, nor could the noble Mortimer receive so many, and all willingly, that let not him be slandered with revolt. Thou dost be liar, Buzzy! Does be lying. He never did stand counter with Glendower. He just says, well, I met the devil alone as Owen Glendower for an enemy. I'm not ashamed, Sirrah. Hence me, henceforth, hear you not speak of Mortimer. Send me your prisoners with the speediest means, or you shall hear me in such a kind that will displease you. Lord Northumberland, we license your departure with your son. Send us your prisoners, or you shall hear of it. And then it was that the unhappy king, whose wrongs in us God pardoned, did set forth upon his Irish expedition, for once he intercepted, did return to be deposed and shortly murdered. And for whose death we in the world's wide mouth live scandalized and foully spoken. Soft, I pray you, did King Richard then proclaim my brother Edmund Mortimer heir to the crown? He did, myself did hear it. Oh, nay, then I cannot blame his cousin King that pushed him on the barren mountain star. But shall it be that you, that put the crown upon the head of this forgetful man, and for his sake wear the detested blot of murderous subornation, shall it be that you, a world of curses, undergo being the agents of base second means, the cords, the ladder, the hangman, rather, oh, pardon me, that I descend so low to show the line and the predicament wherein you range under this subtle king? I shall it for shame be spoken in these days, or fill up chronicles in times to come, that men of your nobility and power did gauge them both in an unjust behalf, and both of you, God pardon, have done to put down Richard, that sweet, lovely rose, and let this thornless canker bowling broke. Shall it for, and shall it in more shame be further spoken, that you are fooled, discarded, and shook off by him for whom these shames ye underwent? No, your time serves when you may redeem your banished honors and restore yourselves into the good thoughts of the world again. Revenge the jeering and disdain contempt of this proud king who studies 
day and night to answer all the debt he owes to you, even with the bloody payment of your debt. Therefore, I say... Please, cousin, say no more. For now I will unclasp a secret book, and to your quick conceiving discontents I'll read you matter deep and dangerous, as full of peril and adventurous spirit, as to or walk a current roaring loud on the unsteadfast footing of a spirit. And if he fall in, good night, or sink, or swim, so danger from the east unto the west, so on across it from north to south, and let them grapple. Oh, the blood more stirs to run a lion than to start a hare. Imagination of some great exploit who drives him beyond the bounds of patience. By heaven, methinks, it were an easy leap to pluck bright honor from the pale-faced moon or dive into the bottom of the deep where fathom life could never touch the ground and pluck up drowned honor by the locks. So he that doth redeem her that might wear without her eyes all the dignities. But out upon this half-faced fellowship, he apprehends a world of figures here, but not the form of what he should have had. I cry you mercy. Those same noble Scots that are your prisoners. I'll keep them all, by God, he shall not have a Scot of them. No, the Scot would save us all, he shall not. I'll keep them by this hand. You start away and lend no ear unto my purposes. Those prisoners you shall keep. Nay, I will, that's flat. He said he would not ransom Mortimer for that. I told you, speak of Mortimer. But I will find him when he lies asleep. And it is here, I'll Mortimer. Nay, nay, of the starling shall be taught to speak nothing but Mortimer and give it him to keep his anger still in motion. Hear me, cousin, a word. All studies here I solemnly defy. Say, for you go and pitch this bully rock. And that same sword and buckler, Prince of Wales, but that I think his father loves him not, and would be glad he met with some mischance, I would have him poisoned with a pot of ale. Farewell, kinsman. I'll talk to you when you are better tempered to attend. Why, what a wasp, stone, and impatient fool art thou to break into this woman's mood, tying thy ear to no tongue but thine own. Why, look you, I am whipped and scourged with the rods, nettled and stung with pismires when I hear of this vile... Politician bowling broke in Richard's time. Uh, what do you call the place? A, a plague of politics in Gloucester shutters where the bad cap duke's uncle kept. His uncle your wife was bound by thee unto this king of smiles, this bowling broke. A splood when you and him back from Ravensburg. At Barclay Castle. Well, you say true. I, I would a candy deal of courtesy. This fawning greyhound then did proffer me with. Oh, look, when his infant fortune comes of age, and a gentle Harry Percy and kind cousin. The devil takes such cousiners! Good uncle, tell your tale I have done! Nay, you have not. To it again! Hmm. Stay your letter. I have done the thing! Then once more to your Scottish prisoners. Deliver them up without their ransom straight, and make the Douglas son your only means for powers in Scotland, which for divers reasons best will send you written, be assured, will easily be granted. You, my noble lord. Your son in Scotland, being thus employed, shall secretly into the bosom creep of that same noble prelate, well beloved the Archbishop. Of York, is it not? True. Who bears hard his brother's death at Bristol, the Lord Scroop. I speak not this in estimation, as what I think might be, but what I know is ruminated, plotted, and set down and stays only to behold the face of that occasion that shall bring it on. I smell it. Upon my life it will do well. For the game is afoot, thou still let slip. I cannot choose but be a noble plot, and then the power of Scotland and of York to join with Mortimer, ha! And so they shall. Oh, faith, it is exceedingly well aimed. And tis no little reason bids us speed, to save our heads by raising of a head. Forbear ourselves as even as we can. The king will always think him in our debt, and think we think ourselves unsatisfied till we have found a time to pay us home. And see already how he doth begin to make us strangers to his looks of love. He does, he does. We'll be revenged on him. Good cousin, farewell. No further go in this than I by letter shall direct your course. When time is ripe, which will be suddenly, I'll steal to Glendower and Lord Mortimer, where you and Douglas and our powers at once, as I will fashion it, shall haply meet to bear our fortunes in our own strong arms, which now we hold with much uncertainty. Farewell, good brother. You shall thrive, I trust. Uncle, adieu. 
Oh, let the hours be short till fields and blows and groans applaud our sports.